Hello everybody and welcome to Bite Size Chemistry Rates of Reaction Part 2. So in the first video there we looked at pretty much all the main questions here because they, they come up quite often in exams, especially those definitions and catalysis and so forth. Um, so today we're going to look at the remainder of the questions um, that could be asked and you will see pretty much all of them are um, repeated. So starting off, um, I think we finished on around here, yeah, 2013. First off, define the rate of reaction. So again, we're seeing the same questions appear. It is the change in concentration per unit time. B, explain clearly why there is almost an instantaneous reaction between aqueous solutions of sodium chloride and siliconitrate. Now, whenever there's an instantaneous reaction, it means that they must be ionic. Okay, um, and that's just something you learn off. And you can check this by looking up the, you know, the electron activity values to see if they're ionic or not. Okay, if the reaction is instant, then the reactions must be ionic as no bonds need to be broken, as obviously they're, they're ions. So it's a good thing to note there um, for that. And I think previous questions have come up, uh, what's the difference between ionic and covalent um, bonding in terms of rates? So part C, everybody. When hydrogen gas and nitrogen gas are mixed at a ratio of 3 is to 1 by volume at room temperature in a sealed container, you get the formation of ammonia, however, it is very slow. Suggest two ways to increase this rate of reaction and explain how um, this works. Well, there's a couple of different ways you can say. You can say use a catalyst, will lower the activation energy. You can increase the temperature. You know, the reactants have more energy, so therefore, they're, because they're moving faster, so they're more likely to meet that activation energy and finally you can increase the concentration of the reactants okay there's more reactants more collisions you could probably have said reduce the container or increase the pressure which would have been reduced the container um but i'm not completely sure about that one because when we're talking about containers there's, there's no guarantee that that container can actually be moved so if we're just looking at the reactants themselves three things increase the concentration of those reactants increase the temperature and use a catalyst. Part D everybody. And this is actually very similar to the experiment. It is actually the experiment. Um, the sodium thiosulfate reacting to HCl and you want to get your sulfur um, dioxide and your sulfur compounds here, your precipitate. Um, and you're asked for D, describe how we would measure the reaction time. Oh yeah, when you add them in. Very simple. Okay. I have five points there, but like I don't, I don't even think all five are necessary. But we'll go through them anyhow. Okay. So the first thing is you place the one of the solutions on into a conical flask, and that's going to be on an X, okay, or a cross or something like that. However you want to phrase this, okay. Usually a white surface. So place the tire surface in a conical flask above an X on a white surface. You add in the HCl and you immediately start the timer, okay, immediately. Okay, you note the time when the X is no longer visible. Okay, um, that's fine. You repeat. Okay, you plot a graph. Okay, so you should always be using the lo those last two points there. That you repeat the procedure um, for different concentrations, because there was different concentrations here, and you plot a graph. Um, pretty much all experiments, including the ones in biology and physics, you can use four and five if you're not sure. And they often do get you the marks. So it's a tidy little one there, 18 marks going for it. So there's actually quite a lot going for that one. Um, so you would have needed most of those, of those marks or those um, points. So I'll repeat it again just to, to clarify it. But you're going to see it again later on when we do um, experiment questions. Place the tire sulfate in a conical flask above an X on a white surface. Add in the HCl, immediately start that timer. Note the time once the X is no longer visible. Repeat it for different concentrations. Plot a graph. Finally, draw a reactant profile diagram there, and again, you were told it was exothermic, and this is what we have here. So we've seen that question come up multiple times now. You need to know it. And realistically, you should probably be drawing, a, not probably, you should be drawing better diagrams than what I have there. Um, 10, 2011, uh, 25 marks. Define the rate of reaction, change in concentration per unit time, okay. Um, Slow between, yeah, suggest type of catalysis responsible for this increased um, rate of reaction. So using platinum, there, powdered platinum, 
okay hydrogen oxygen gases so you've got a solid and liquid almost definitely going to be heterogeneous which you have here they're in different phases so you have a gas and you have a solid describe the mechanism um, by which the powdered platinum increases the rate of reaction okay so anytime mechanism comes up okay reactants are adsorbed onto the catalyst surface the reaction takes place on the surface the products desorb from the surface okay so as soon as you see a mechanism this is what you should be thinking of three points that's it and finally you can see again draw a labor diagram of reactant profile one but it was a slightly different um because you had to show one with and without a catalyst so this is what i have here exact same thing again except this time now you can see i have one here where it has a much smaller ea and that's my catalyst no harm practicing those diagrams 2009 question 9 so I'm like a broken record here there's so much repetition going on um, so really rates of reaction it should be a question that you should really try to answer especially if there's no graph um, because it could be an easy 50 marks if it comes up as a full question which it often does okay explain active en activation energy and effective collisions we have it here Activation energy is the minimum energy required for colliding particles to form um, an effective collision. An effective collision then is one that's a collision that results in the formation of a product. So it doesn't matter how many times those reactants collide, if they do not have enough energy, it is not going to be an effective collision and therefore they will not form a product. Again, you're given the tile sulfate and HCl and you're asked to describe the, how the time was taken for us. Okay, so that was very simple. You add one solution to the other, you start the clock immediately, the timer immediately, whatever. You record the time when the cross cannot be seen anymore. So there wasn't going to ever be that many marks for that because there was only six. Okay, you didn't have to talk about different concentrations or plotting graphs or whatever. Now, I really like the next one. In the reaction mixture, what effect, if any, does an increase in temperature of 10 Kelvin have on each of the following? Okay, does it have any effect on number of collisions, the effectiveness of collisions, and the activation energy? Okay, so increasing the temperature for the number of collisions. Okay, heat will increase the number of collisions because the, um, they're giving the particles more energy, they're going to be faster. Okay, um, and therefore they're more likely to hit off one another. Um, for effective collisions, yeah, heat will also increase the number of effective collisions because you're giving them more energy. And activation energy, no effect. Only a catalyst has any effect on the activation energy. Okay. We've seen this picture before here. Your platinum wire here, your hot methanol here, okay, and your methanol going to be formed. So state one observation made during this um, experiment, name the two products. Identical to what we've been asked before. And what type of catalysis is, um, is involved here? So like the flash gets hot, the popping sounds, the platinum wire glows, you get the smell of methanol forming um, for the products, methanol forms, hydrogen gas forms because of the popping sounds, and water. Type of catalysis, okay, hetero, heterogeneous catalysis. Okay, explain one way in which the presence of the platinum catalyst speeds up the oxygen, oxidation of the me hot methanol. Well, this all you have to do there is state that the platinum catalyst lowers the activation energy. Because that's what a catalyst is, isn't it? So you can see here, these are very similar to what I've had before. The products, the catalysis. Okay, so the catalyst here lowers the activation energy. Now, explain how a catalyst poison interferes with this type of catalysis. We've seen that one before again. Um, the catalyst poisons blocks the active sites on the surface um, and it does so by permanently bonding. Okay, so that's a problem. Now, the next question you weren't asked, which is kind of reasons why I, I wanted to, to do this question. Um, give another example of a reaction that involves the same type of catalysis, so the hetero, um, indicating clearly the reactants and the catalyst. Okay, so you would have done a mandatory experiment for this one. So this is the and measuring the rate of oxygen production where you use manganese dioxide so this was your equation here um 
at the top there, which you do need to know. And you then had to clearly state which was the catalyst and which was the reactant. So the MnO2, which is black powder, was the catalyst. And the hydrogen peroxide, the H2O2, was the reactant. And you would have noticed that at the very end of the reaction, okay, you still had your powder inside the liquid. In other words, it did not dissolve. So therefore, it had to be hetero. Okay. Um, and that was it for the rates of reaction questions, really. Like, you can keep going back, but to be honest, they were, they were all the same. Um, all the same. Between part one and part two, I can't see any other type of questions, really. Um, the dust explosion didn't come up there. They may have came up in an experiment question, like, a, you know, a part A of it, um, which I'll get to when I'm, when I'm doing um, a video on that. But, like, the rest of the questions were very repetitive. Those definitions, though, like, you do need to know them. Um, there's no getting around that. So everybody, look, I hope that video helped. Um, I'll be making some more videos on rates for the experiments, uh, so stay tuned for that.